believe we were here. I am Nick Face. It's been a long time. I think we are on a month hiatus. Sorry about that. My life has uh, been crazy with everything going on. It's nice to sit down in an afternoon and have a nice program. So here we are today. We have our same cast of characters that are with us. Me, of course. We have Tom. I don't know, understand the whole Carolina Panthers hat, but whatever floats your boat, floats your boat or sinks your boat. Um, and we have Phil Healy back as well. So welcome, everybody. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, I mean, Thursday night football. They're playing so, tonight. Who is? Carolina's playing tonight. Thursday night football. Oh, is that who what they're playing is? tonight? Yeah. They are playing. Uh, and this they begs are the, playing Houston. Uh, and this begs the question, beg, you know, this lends to the question how many hats do you have and do you always wear? <laughs> The team that's playing on Thursday night. Uh, I don't have every NFL team, so no. Whatever. There's a lot that we have missed since we've been with you last. We have the Red Sox or the Yellow Sox, depending on how you want to look at them with that. Uh, they are surging right now. They're on seven wins, I think, in a row that they have gotten. And those yellow uniforms, I, I go with it if they keep winning that way. They are in very good shape now with getting a wild card spot, securing that one slot. Um, it wasn't a very good August, but ever since September turned, it's been a tremendous, it's been a tremendous month. So they're, they're setting themselves up greatly. They have a series coming up against the Yankees, probably the biggest series of the season this weekend. And then they finish with the low, lonely Baltimore Orioles and the Washington Nationals. So there's really no excuse here, guys. If they miss it, what a choke job that would be. And I just don't see that. I don't see it with everything that's gone on with this team. So I'm, I'm pleasantly optimistic on it. We have our Patriots that started their season. We um, are one and one right now. Mac Jones under center for the team. I'm really enjoying what I've seen so far. We'll talk about that. We have the Bruins that got their training camp and everything kicking on and things are starting to ramp up for them. And then the Celtics don't really have anything happening. Right? They'll, they'll be here soon, late, late, uh, late October. Um, so I want to first start with the Red Sox. So have you seen any of the games, guys? Do you know what's well, happening? I just, just want to start off by saying let's, let's just put it out there that August has never really been a strong month for the Red Sox. Not historically. Yeah, no. historically, ever since the um, – during the uh, – what was it? The Yaki years, yeah. They've been, you know, all doom and gloom. They've been coming out fast, and then they halt. Yeah, I mean – Chris Sale returned, so that's a nice boost. Chris Sale is 5-0 and right now with a low 2 ERA. It's nice to have him back. Um, so they, 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 they look really good right now. What else have we seen from anything from the Sox? Uh, the outfield. Uh, I saw the the replay from the last game of the Mets series where TK uh, threw out whoever it was at third. So they lead the league in assists this year between Renfro, Verdugo, and then Kiki in the outfield. Why are why is anybody? I tweeted this the other night. Why are you running on this outfield? Like that? It's the strangest thing. They have cannons. They're going to get you out. It's very impressive. I haven't been Made able some to errors, but arm strength wise, they've been very, very good. I've been very happy. I haven't with been able to run on the outfield, the Red Sox outfield in a few years. I think the best bargain of all of baseball, though, this offseason, this past offseason, was Hunter Renfro. The guy's a machine. I mean, he's built like a truck. I think he's up to 25 homers. He's close to almost. 80 if no he's i think he's at like 85 rbis very close to hitting 100 rbis on the season getting him for i think 3.5 mil with two-year options on him to keep that was a great move by bloom and i gotta tell yeah. you I, I really like kiki i really like him i think he's a spark plug i think he's done i know tom i was bad on him at the beginning he didn't start off so hot but he's got a likability to him there's a lot of likability you see with some of these players on the team and uh, Schwarber, he had what two home runs 
in the last game of the series? Last game that was played, Schwarber has been an outstanding addition to this team that needed another kind of spark. Schwarber's up to, I think, 31 home runs in the season uh, between the Nationals and the Red Sox. So, and you get, guys, I mean, Bobby Dahlbeck, can you even believe the turnaround this guy has had? I actually want him in the lineup every night now. Uh, He's doing we, great. We, hold on. Can we play can we play tape to a month ago? Or two Please. Months which, ago? which episode, Phil? Which episode? Please. Like just any, any one of them. Any one of exile, them. We were putting him on Exile Island, and he's just been nothing but clutch. He's got confidence. He's got swag. It's, it's almost like he's a whole new person. But then again, you have guys like Matt Barnes, who I don't even want on the playoff roster cup. So it, it's like a deja vu kind of thing. I knew this was coming with Barnes. I knew it. So they put Barnes in last night. It was 12-2, I think, at one point. Couldn't even get out of the inning. Couldn't even get out of the inning. Couldn't throw a strike to save his life. He's, he's fiddling with his belt. Oh, let me fiddle with this, fiddle with that. Can't figure out his arm slot. The guy's a mental runs. case. He always has been in his season. I don't know how the hell he was doing as well as he was uh, or in the first half of the season. Matt Barnes was an all-star. Put that in you. Say that one more time, folks. He was an all-star. What Clay a Buckles joke. Got to him. <laughs> what a joke. So we'll see how it goes on, on that front. I, I just I have a lot of confidence right now with the team. Bill, have you seen anything with these yellow unis? I've seen a little bit. I haven't really, I was talking to Tom beforehand how surprised I was because I thought they were out of it. And they were for a while, but he's like, oh no, they, be, they won seven in a row. I'm like, oh, I thought they lost five in a row. Yep. But uh, no, and you know what? I it's, it's great to see them, you know, like you said. The this, surging socks. The surging socks. And this series with the Yanks uh, is it's going to, yeah, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? You knew it kind of two and a half game anyway. lead right now on the Blue Jays and the Yanks. <laughs> yep. um, two game, two game, lead. two game on the Yankees, two and a half on the, two uh, and a half Blue, on Jays. the Blue Jays. Yeah, but pretty close. I mean, and, and what was Yankee, it? I think the Yankees are in shambles. I mean, I know that they've got three wins against. I think it was the Rangers. Yeah, I think the Red Sox are going to show show everybody what they need to do and get the job done. I which is. Which is great. This is what who they were at the beginning of the year. You know what I mean? It will be good. Yeah. Um, anything else on the yellow socks? No, I wasn't a fan of the jerseys before, but I'm kind of liking them now. So those jerseys were in uh, it, it, they they have Boston on the front of them. The reason for the yellow and the blue, it's Boston Marathon colors. It's a it's a thing after the, obviously 2013. They made those uniforms up and everything. I don't know why they were wearing it as of last week, maybe for something different, but. Um, they wanted to do it in tribute because of September 11th. 9-11. Okay. That's what it was. Okay. So great touch. Uh, definitely a sentimental kind of feel for those uniforms and all. You keep winning, you wear whatever the heck you want. I know there's some people out there, get those ugly looking things out of here. Go back to the whites and reds and blues. If they keep on winning, who cares? Who cares? Guy on 98.5 is just, these things, Zolax the same way. Get a life. What else yeah. do you have to say? That, that's, that's it on the red phones. Uh, <laughs> how about in uh, all the rest of baseball? Did you guys hear about the incident that happened with the Rays and the Blue Jays this past week? Kind of got national news. So Kevin Kiermeyer was sliding into the catcher for the Blue Jays during, I think it was Monday night's game or Tuesday night's game. And when he slid, he picked up the kind of like the cheat sheet card that the catcher has on his wrist. You know, the little wrist cards that the athletes have from something. Picked it up because it fell out of his thing and took it back to the dugout for the Rays. Yeah, the Blue Jays are not very happy right now. Not very happy. And they're all sitting and Kiermaier's like, oh, I didn't look at it. Bah, bah, bah. I didn't do anything. I didn't show my manager and everything. BS. Yeah. I call BS on the play. So the next game, Kiermaier got drilled by one of the pitchers and everything. So it's, it's kind of ugly right now. 
The reason I bring this up is the Rays, yes, they're in first place here in the, the, the uh, division and all. However, karma can strike you when you do something real dumb. And something real dumb was what Kiermaier did. And I have a funny feeling that incident that occurred right there, because you know how I am with being psychic and seeing things, how they happen and all big time. You watch. The Rays are going to go bye-bye in the first round. You watch. I'm calling it right now. Karma. Going to come right back at you. Do you think they're just going to fall apart? Or do you just think yep, it's... They're going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. Yep. They're well, not even going to get out of the first round. I mean, Toronto had, that, Toronto had that big... Uh, that, that big game against Baltimore where they had a bunch of issues going on, too. And I do think it's going to be Red Sox-Blue Jays in this wild card game. I do not think the Yankees are going to hold on. I really don't. I am much more scared of the Blue Jays, though, to tell you the truth. I am much more scared of them. That team with Vladdy and George Springer and uh, Bo Bichette, Kevin Biggio. They, I, in a one-game series, home field advantage may help for the Red Sox, but they got to get that. If they have to go to the uh, Canada and they have to go to the Blue Jays to play that, I don't get. I don't give them a shot. I really don't. I don't, because that lineup is is scary, and their pitching has been pretty damn good too. Robbie Ray, and they traded for the guy from Barrios. the Twins, Barrios. They have a very very good team. So we shall see. We shall see what happens on that front. But change gears. Let's talk Patriots. Let's talk with the Patriots because it's a different tune that's being sung right now in Gillette under lead of Mac Jones. Let's hear our takes. Tom, what do you think? How's Mac? How's Mac holding up? Are you hap happy with how he's performed and how the team has done so far? Um, let's just say it's met expectations so far. Yep. Um, I wouldn't say I'm pleased. But I wouldn't say I'm upset either. Um, the game against the Jets was definitely a big confidence booster uh, after the loss to Miami, especially if they looked at the score of the Miami game this past weekend with uh, where they played the Bills and lost 35 to nothing. Um, so that's kind of a big confidence booster. Zach Wilson threw four interceptions, um, which on the fourth one, I don't know where the heck he was throwing it to. Hey, the Jets have been a joke for a long time now. Yeah. They need to bring sexy Rexy back. But he's doing NFL Sunday countdown now. He doesn't no. want to come so, back. <laughs> he has always has been. Bonehead. Um, yeah, I mean, we we talked a little bit about it. Um, you know, the Monday after and they could use some improvements, but I mean, I'm, they're definitely looking like there's something there. They should be two and all. They should be. You know, you had that horrible fumble towards the end of the game against Miami. That was um, not very good. You should you have very easily fun. had it. Yeah. No, you, I mean, also the coaching staff shouldn't have ran him into the ground at the no. end. They should have noticed that he was kind of, done at that point and yeah, uh, yeah I, it, it sucks because I remember I was like going back and forth for when I could watch uh, opening day and I, I was like what I would just have the ball and yeah and they were yeah what was it they're uh and the defense couldn't save them and that was no. kind of yeah no. so you let a win you let a very winnable game go in that first game I don't too I don't put too much stock into it because you still got quite a performance by Mac Jones that first game. I think his first game was better than his second game. That's just my overall take from it. No, I agree with you. I agree with you on that. I just yeah. want to see more trust given to Mac, meaning I want to see him throw the ball, throw the damn football more. And I think he'll, he'll even come out and admit it to you too. The team he needs to throw. We need to see what he has. It's great that you have a running game and all, but you need more tricks of the trade I'm in the camp where, you know, the whole thing with McDaniels and the play call, I almost wish he wasn't here anymore. I really do. I really do. Some of the calls I question quite a bit, even Brady's last year when he was there, 
a lot of questionable decisions, a lot of questionable calls that were coming and everything. And, um, you know, I don't, I, I'm not big on the whole thing with him, but I understand that he has a lot of, a lot of pull within the organization for everything now. So, you know, kind of is what it is. Anything you wanted to add on that, Tom? No, I mean, I, other than the, um, Harris made up for that fumble though. Yeah, that, no, that's how I thought about that it. massive yeah. touchdown. He ran through what five defenders? Yes, five or six defenders. So five or six defenders that came from it. Yes, yes. I see you. I see you laughing and shaking your head. Yes, I, I'm trying my best to multitask as much as much as I can. It's very difficult. Sorry. Join oh, the club, hi. baby. Join the club. Oh, it's just when it rains, it pours. It does. No, that I, I, I don't think he made up for the fumble per se, but I, I think you guys are right. Like he, I don't think you get on him as much for that fumble. Yep. But uh, yeah, no, that run in the end zone uh, second game against uh, the Jets was insane. And we all forget, I mean, not to say it matters, like I, I'm saying it like it matters, but it was a road game. Yep. It was against the Jets. I, there should be like just an asterisk uh, over <laughs> Next to everything we say for game two. It was two, not but. a very exciting game. I will tell you that. It was one of the, it was a sleepy, lethargic kind of effort. Slop. Big pile of slop. I'll take a victory, but, you know, just a big pile of slop. Tom Brady front. So, Brady, we have two weeks basically to go until he's coming back here to uh, the Patriots. We've heard some uh, commotion start with Tom Brady Sr. coming out and talking about uh, Belichick and – how they don't have any respect for him. And he has given away all of his Patriots gear and everything. And it's sad. It's sad to hear it. It's sad to see it all play out from everything. I just don't know. I just don't know why they're so upset about the whole thing with, you know, moving on the Patriots, you know, they made that decision with everything. I would think that they have a little bit more respect towards those 20 years that Brady had with the Patriots. Hold on one sec. So that's, that's basically what I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, there's, it just doesn't make any sense. There's gotta be something going on and no one's saying anything. And it's not going to come out until they do like a 30 for 30 with the, uh, on ESPN whenever Brady retires. So yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. So my thing here for we have the who do we play this upcoming week? The Saints? Saints. Winnable? It should be. I haven't seen much. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I haven't really seen much of sports outside. I'm still following the Red Sox because you know. Fairweather fan, I'm, they're winning. I'm watching. You know, it is what it is. Um, I haven't really watched much of the other football. I've heard a little bit of you know bits and pieces. I know one of the bigger highlighted games was the Ravens and the Chiefs game. Um, with the was it Ravens? And, yeah, it was Ravens and Chiefs. Yeah, and the Ravens. And that won. was a Sunday night game. The Ravens pulled out that victory, which is pretty sweet to see. Um, how are the Saints looking? Is, is Jamison Winston their quarterback? Not real. Not yeah. That. Jameis yeah. Winston is their quarterback, but weird without looking, Breeze. Yeah, they're not looking too good right now. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think the the Panthers uh, themselves, I think uh, they took care of them last week. Yeah. They kind of snuffed they're out. They're not the supposed game. to be that spectacular, the Panthers, right? No, I didn't think so. No, I think they're. It's weird. I I mean, the NFL any given Sunday, but still, um, yeah. I don't know. you know, it's a, it, and listen, it's Mac. It's only been two games. And who knows what's happening? I mean, like, it's so weird because, you know, Patriots around here watching for us is like, well, talk to us in January or December. And well, oh, good. Uh, I mean, he, Mac was like spreading the ball around like he was Tom Brady. He was, you know, giving it to different receivers. But like, that Mike's, may be uh, one thing that to the advantage of Josh McDaniels is that same system that's been used with Brady for over the years gets implemented into Mac territory and he can do his thing. 
But like you said, he needs, we want to, you know, we need to see, we need to see more. We need to see what he's all about. I'm excited for him. I never felt the, the, the excitement with Newton. Goodbye. Isn't it telling that no other team has even tried to sign him? Very telling, very telling. So um, we'll see how yeah, it goes here with the Saints. He has a very good awareness too, Mac Jones. A very good awareness of what's going on around him. Yep, which is good to see. Yep. So hopefully, the more he plays, the more he builds up that confidence, um, and the Patriots keep on clicking. I'm expecting to be two and one after Sunday, and then I would hope so. I I don't. The, the Bucks are going to beat the Patriots, right? Well. I, the defense is tough for the box. I will say that they don't look that great. I'll, I, I'm going to consider it a win if we can get a touchdown. Okay. I'll consider it a win if we can get a touchdown. How but, how wild would it be if the Patriots actually did beat the box? I wouldn't be surprised. I really wouldn't. It's going to be interesting to see what the fan base does too. Um, we were just talking about the Patriots and the Bucks game, Phil. Yeah, yeah, I was listening. Man. What what is what is the take going to be at Gillette there? Uh, when Brady gets there, are fans going to be more rooting for the Bucks or are they going to be rooting for the Patriots? I think they'll root for the Patriots, but I think they'll you know, I think he'll get his like uh, applause break, and then maybe after the applause break, you'll you'll hear more of the bo- and you might hear some boos in that initial applause break, but then you like think the, he's going to get booed. Well, you, well, I think you're going to get applause and like a boo here huh? at the bottom. And yeah. then it's going to go up more uh, booze as things go on. I why think you're going to get you your initial. Him? That's the question. I mean, I, I understand. Why did people why, why did people move? boo Adam Vinatieri when he came he back? Did? Yes, people, the first game back, they booed him. And just like, I, listen, I don't, I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying I think that's what people are going to do. Because um, I think there is that animosity. I just like, don't get it. You know. I, don't, I don't get why. If you boo him, what are you booing for? If you're booing, are you, you should be booing for Belichick or Kraft, I think. Yeah, for letting I'm him go, crazy. sure. Yeah. No, I don't – listen, I like you say, I don't agree with the booing. Yeah. Uh, but I think that's – I think people are thinking, you know, he left. He left us in the lurch, and he's the enemy now. It just said – he, he left the, He left us to Cam Newton. <laughs> yeah. There you um, go. Says it all you right also, there. You could also argue – and this is a sound argument that my buddy and I have, and I, I don't disagree with them, but I also don't believe it 100% wholesale because I'm kind of with this group that Bill Belichick and, you know, the uh, front offices of the Patriots, like they botched it with with Brady. But also Brady, he kind of didn't, he didn't give 100% that last year he was here. Whether you think it was, oh, yeah, uh, yeah I, I don't think he did. I think he kind of was going through the motions. He knew. I think, yeah. He knew it was oh, yeah, they, Sure. But also with that, he didn't want to go out with the bang either. He didn't really give it. And yeah. And Gronk, that's, Gronk uh, knew too. I will tell you that right now. Gronk knew. This plan <laughs> well, yeah, was he'd already play. retired. This he'd plan retired. was in play, I think, as soon as that Super Bowl got won. Yeah. Probably. For now, who knows? When they won a that. plan with Gronk. It seems very suspicious, him actually thinking things through. But I have I have to say though, that T Mobile commercial with Brady and Gronk is is pretty hilarious. I don't think I've seen it where they've like they're like talking on the phone and Brady's like trying to figure out what he's going to do with the rest of his life and he's like oh Rob what do you think I should do he's like oh you know uh retire move down to Tampa we can hang out blah 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 and then it's Mm. and then it cuts the narrator it's like oh on a botchy network this is what he heard oh sure move down to Tampa and I'm coming with you so then it goes to cuts their press conference he's like I'm going down to Tampa and I'm bringing Rob with me (laughs) Well, hey, with that being said, I think Tampa could run the table here. But also, I, I could see I could see the Patriots playing a close game and it being – because I don't think Belichick's want – I mean, maybe Belichick throws everything, in, you know, the, in the kitchen sink at the team. Maybe they're like, hey, we want to win this one because if we win this, then we're in a, we, we hit a streak. I don't know. I mean, I, I hope it at the very least it's competitive. But who knows? But, I mean, the question is, though, are they like, has he changed the playbook since Brady left? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, has, what are they what, willing to has do? anything changed? 
Yeah. Or are they That's a good point. I bet you maybe point. a little bit, but I'm sure Brady knows exactly what's coming. Yeah. I mean, he always has. He's always known what's coming. It's, always it's just. But so we'll look forward to seeing all those games upcoming real soon. Um, the last thing I was going to mention here before we wrap everything up was um, just with Tom with the Bruins. Who do you put in? Second line center on the team right now. If you were to be a guessing person, who goes in? Charlie Coyle. They're trying to really play up uh, Jack Studnicka. And I'm like, no, no, not going to happen. I think it's Coyle, too. I think it's Coyle. We shall see. And the other report is um, Rask is definitely coming back midseason to the Bruins. He is. So we got this Linus Olmark guy. Hopefully he does a great job. And doesn't even have to be a conversation piece anymore with Rask. It's like, sorry, we got our guy. We're good. And we still have Swayman. So I'm curious to see the balance and take on how things will look on that. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see how Swayman does. Because, I mean, as of right now, all marks the backup, really, yep. once Rask comes back. But yep. Yep. hockey starts, starts up September 25th. I'm looking forward to it. I am. I am. I've missed it. I've missed it. Let's see what happens with everything there. And look, right. just, just yeah, to let ahead. you know, uh, the NBA starts up at October 19th. The what? Uh, you know, the National Basketball Association. Are you guys hearing me? Can you I hear? I don't associate with that kind of association. <laughs> My Lord. <laughs> Come on. I will say that there is a little bit more hype with the Celtics, with um, new coach and all. Um, new yeah, it's kind of crazy. Team. Al Horford's here. Um. Might it, it it's probably going to be a better year than it was last year. I'm saying probably, it, I, 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 I think, think it's, it's going to be more be fun. I think yeah. it's going to be more fun. And they open up the year in New York against Kemba and Evan Fournier. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very interesting on that front too. So we shall see how everything goes. Pleasure to have everybody here once again. Again, this is our season premiere of, I want to say we 15 years into this now. I can't even remember it now anymore. I don't know, Crazy. but we're, this is episode, I think, 119. So it's pretty crazy. 119 with Norcam. And you've had, Norcam. yeah, so. I think I had like 100 something with um, RCTV. That's yeah. crazy. So what can we say? We love our sports. We love to face the facts. And we will be here again next time for another great episode here. For Phil and Tom, Nick Face, we'll see you next time on Face Facts. Bye-bye.